I think from a regulatory perspective, though, with what we want to be able to achieve with remote ID and what functions we think it can adhere to, um, I don't think I'd be very supportive of pilot, pilot location being accessible to Excellent. the public. Okay. Today, we're going to be bringing you a substantial and important update on UK remote ID. Here in the UK, remote ID is still at something of an early stage. And recently, Geeksbarner had an interview booth at the national trade show called DroneX, which was held at London's XL. We used this opportunity to meet with many of the stakeholders, including some of you viewers, but many of the stakeholders across aviation from security to government and, of course, the regulator. Today, we'll be discussing what we learned about remote ID and specifically pilot location. Before we get into it, could my awesome regular viewers please hit the like button nice and early. It really does help. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. And of course, to keep up to date on all the latest drone news from the UK and worldwide. With Remote ID now in place in the US, the single main issue that has resolved so many people against the new rule is the pilot location being available to the public. Being able to track a drone pilot working or flying recreationally seems like a simple risk to explain. However, for whatever reason, it appears the security services in the US insisted on not only tracking the pilot location to within 15 meters, which is actually one of the most accurate rules of its type in the world, but to also ensure this data is open to the public via a simple app on their smartphone. This has led to what I would estimate is one of the single most prevalent issues leading to many drone flyers openly discussing non-compliance of drone rules. The fear of being approached whilst flying really is all too real, especially when you factor in the value of equipment being used by some commercial operators. Here in the UK, however, according to the conversations we held at Dronext regarding this hot topic, there is not the appetite to see the public accessing the data. We have an interview clip to play you in just a few seconds from Mark Worry of the CAA giving their official response on pilot location. But we also spoke to one of the security stakeholders who was also present at the show, who told us the exact details are still being discussed. The safety concerns regarding pilot location are well understood. This message was repeated by others we spoke to at the show who might well have a hand in forming the final policy. Next, let's play the clip of the interview from the CAA on this topic. Are you aware of anything on, on, on that side of things? Because I think remote ID as a principle would be a lot more, not popular, but would be a, a welcome, acceptable, well, yeah, acceptable if that pilot location wasn't there here in the UK. Yeah, I can't speak exactly on what's going to happen with that because we're still at the early stages of tendering for what remote ID is going to look like. Yes. Um, I think from a regulatory perspective, though, with what we want to be able to achieve with remote ID and what functions we think it can adhere to, um, I don't think I'd be very supportive of pilot, pilot location being accessible Excellent. to the public. Okay. I'm not sure what that gives us from yes. a regulatory yes. perspective. Now, you're right that there would be reasons why law enforcement would generally need to know a location, but they can already find information in various other ways. Thanks for That's it, exactly. Yeah. Now, what they need to know is, was the aircraft in the wrong place and somewhere that could potentially be dangerous? And that's the element that I'm interested in from a safety perspective as well. Excellent. I'm also interested if I can get an accurate position of where an aircraft is, I also have the opportunity to use that as a potential safety mitigation. I can somehow publish that, not the pilot location, but yes. the aircraft location, yes. to other stakeholders, then suddenly I've got a much better way to help unlock things like BD loss flying, and longer range activity. And yeah, like yeah. Well, where, where that, because the, the remote ID thing has kind of gone through so many um um meanders of, oh, yes. of, yeah. of, of the river um, and you know from uh, all, all the almost original conception of this could help from a utm point of view and yeah. and as you say bb loss and knowing where aircraft is and where pilots are can be very very useful from that point of view yeah. and then it sort of went especially in the us back across from more of an enforcement mm -hmm. um, and, and we know from speaking with with um, uh, kevin at the faa there that it was more of a uh, security services type thing yeah. that asked for remote id to be so accurate and so we can understand that, but um, but yeah, no, it's 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 good to get that feedback. Yeah. Because again, it's it's you know we are very different to the US in terms of geographical, in terms of everything else. But and also, as you say, there are other ways for law enforcement here in the UK already to know exactly where the pilots oh, do when they're flying exactly their drone down. I mean, remote ID as a concept is very much originally centred on that safety and security angle in terms of protection of critical infrastructure, general aviation safety, and that enforcement angle. So yeah. that will probably have primacy with whatever happened from remote ID. Okay. The public don't need to know where a pilot is necessarily for any of that. And things like potential 
UTM use cases and potential risk mitigations are positive benefits that come out from it. So I'm looking forward to those, but I don't believe those will be the primacy and they won't be the real reason that we integrate. Fantastic. Thank you. That's, that's actually for, for, for how remote ID is still in its infancy here in the UK. Mm. That's a really great answer. So thank you. It's, it's good. It's good to just feel how that, 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 that happens. And as I've often said to people with the CAA in the, here in the UK, if you guys know something, you will tell us. Or if you have an opinion on something, you will, you're, you're quite open with that information, which is great. We have a lot more to come from that interview, including the CAA thoughts on audit channels, the future of sub 250 gram drones in the UK, and many more topics. So keep an eye on the channel for those coming up. So we have the CAA on record, certainly backing the thought process that pilot location is not something that would add to the safety conversation. And the focus for them is much more on where the aircraft is and the safe and legal flight of the drone itself. The vast majority of viewers who contact us on this issue certainly feel the same way. Most people I speak to see a value in the pilot location being available live for law enforcement users, but the importance of protecting the pilot themselves from confrontation and the potential for even being criminally targeted seems to be on the minds of UK authorities when developing the UK remote ID system. It would appear, at least appear, that remote ID is a given here in the UK. The concept itself is not one that we're going to have success fighting, and instead we need to perhaps turn our thoughts to ensuring pilot safety and a workable and affordable system is actually put into place. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Could a system that does not show the pilot location be more acceptable or does remote ID overall still leave you feeling angry? There is going to be a live show on this particular topic as well coming up on the channel. So keep an eye out for that if you want to talk about it more with me. And we will, of course, keep you fully up to date with any further updates we get on this vital topic for hobby and commercial drone users out there in the UK. Sean out.